Three, two, one. <laughs> Getting mucky in the name of conservation in Thailand. High five. We meet the man who's visited all 419 U.S. national parks in trending travel. And going under in Austria. We're starting this week in Thailand, in the small coastal village of Klong Khon in Samut Songkram province, 90 minutes southwest of Bangkok. Few international travelers venture here, but in recent years, the amazing transformation of its ecosystem has begun to draw people like me. While it might not be one of the most beautiful ecosystems, it's actually quite full of life. There's snails, cockles, crabs, macaques, birds, all kinds of wildlife here. There's a monkey right here with a, with a crab in its mouth. This place is <laughs> quite an experience. Because here, in what might look like an endless sea of mud, there are local delicacies and a story of a community who have fought back from the brink of disaster. I arranged to meet up with a local guide to show me around. คือต้องบอกว่าสายน้ําเนี่ยมันอยู่คุกคนไทยมาตั้งแต่สมัยดึกดําบรรพ์ตั้งแต่อยุธยาแล้วเนาะก็คือชีวิตกับสายน้ํา
Well, after an hour, even I managed to find some cockles, but the fishing here hasn't always been so good. The shellfish, shrimps, and crabs, which thrive in this environment, were almost at the brink of collapse just a few decades ago because of the dramatic loss of one simple thing, mangroves. Industrial shrimp farming left the mangrove forest decimated and with it a fragile ecosystem which the villagers depended on to survive. But the local people began to fight back. <laughs> more air, yeah. More air than. The king. Paibun helped bring hundreds of people from nearby villages to replant the mangroves. Eventually, their work began to pay off, and it caught the attention of royalty. อ่าครับก็กําลังจะถึงนักท่องเที่ยวเราตอนนี้พอท่านประเทศเสด็จมาครั้งแรกนะครับก็มีการเล่าลือกันไปต่างๆนานาว่าพระองค์ท่านเน
Also, in Samut Songkran, there's the Amphawa floating market that has that classic image of Thailand's bustling waterways. Floating markets have long been popular with travelers, so beware less authentic imitations, made just for tourists. But here in Amphawa, among the boats and stalls, you'll see mostly locals and domestic tourists in a market with a truly authentic place in the community. It is beautiful and atmospheric, day or night. If you're a music lover, you might not associate jazz with Thailand, but head to the small riverside town of Pai in July, and you'll find a jazz and blues festival drawing talent from throughout the country. It's the perfect place to spend an evening after a day exploring the local hot springs and waterfalls. Thailand also has some of the best diving and snorkeling opportunities in the world. Visit the Simian Islands on the southwest coast and you'll find that these remote wild islands, set within the protection of a national park, have an abundance of marine life to discover. To preserve their fragile ecosystem, the islands are closed to tourists between May and October. But outside these months, you can easily visit on a day trip from the mainland. And finally, if you're planning ahead and want to see a true spectacle this year, head to the ancient northern capital of Chiang Mai in November when the Yi Peng and Loi Krathong festivals coincide. They are spectacular and dramatic festivals of light. The Yi Peng Lantern Festival looks ahead to the coming year and you'll get an opportunity to make a New Year's wish as you release one of hundreds of lanterns which decorate the night sky. Still to come on The Travel Show. I'll have your guide to this summer's music festivals in Europe. And we find out what it takes to be champ of a sport that's not for the faint-hearted. So don't go away. While you're exploring this part of Thailand, you cannot miss this spot. If you can believe it, this railway is still active. A train goes right down the middle of this market. And while you might think that the market grew around the train line, it's actually the other way around. The market has been here for over a century as a place for the fishermen to sell their goods. And so when a train line was built here to come through a few years later, they just didn't move. When the train comes, the market steps aside. Locals call it the umbrella pull-down market. Please, from on coming or departing trains, Please always be aware of standing behind the red line. Standing behind the red line. Whoa, whoa. This is crazy. Whoa, whoa, back, 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 back. It comes so far off the track. Suck it in, suck it in. <laughs> <laughs> The trains pass through up to eight times a day, but make sure to check the timetable if you want to come and see them. Woo, okay. <laughs> That's incredible. Make sure not to miss this if you come to Thailand. It's now time for Trending Travel, our regular pick of the top photos, videos, and stories all happening online this week. This is more than the usual planning argument going on in Spain. The Sagrada Familia applied for a building permit in 1885, but the city's council never got round to responding to the application. 137 years later, the Gaudi design masterpiece has finally been granted permission to carry on with the work with the hope that it'll finally be finished in 2026. With all the talk about space being the next frontier in travel, 
The question was asked, where could you go once you get there? Well now, NASA are inviting people to pop over to the International Space Station. NASA are saying that this will roughly cost 11,250 US dollars every day. And food, air, medical and fitness resources add another $22,500, totaling roughly 33,750 US dollars every single day. Travel to the space station is not included. Have you ever been stuck in a station wishing you had something to read? Well, these machines have landed in Canary Wharf after already being installed in France, the US, and in Hong Kong. The machines made by French company Short Edition will dispense free one, three, and five minute stories from famous authors. And you can even submit your own stories online. A perfect time for a tale before your trip. Interested in turtles and five-star resorts? Of course you are. The Coco Palm Duni Kolhu in the Maldives are looking for an intern to work there this August. Those wishing to be considered must submit a short video and a 500-word cover letter explaining why they think they would be a good fit for the role. They don't need to have previous experience, but they must be over the age of 18 years and keen to work in a related field. A man who has visited 419 U.S. national parks in one long trip has just finished. After his father died of cancer, Mika Mayer decided to take time out and go on an ambitious three-year trip. So I traveled to every single state and territory across the United States, almost 200,000 miles in total, to visit everything from our national parks to our national seashores, national preserves and national reserves, everything from hiking mountains to rafting rivers and visiting our most important cultural and historic landmarks. In Europe, we're now heading into summer, and that means the start of the festival season. And there are hundreds to choose from, from dance to folk, to city, to countryside, from glamping to camping. So here's our trending guide to what's hot, whatever your taste and wherever you are. Major festivals are no longer about a week in a muddy field with nowhere to keep clean. Some festivals are so well kitted out, they're like mini hotels, with yurts and even buses to sleep in, so you can enjoy every day feeling fresh. But make sure you take a lock for your tent if you plan to leave anything in there, as things do sometimes go missing. If waiting to get back home after a big weekend in a field is not your thing, then there is a huge rise in people making a holiday around a one-day city or island festival. Worldwide is in Sete, just outside of Montpellier, and Sonar is bang in the center of Barcelona. Some of these, like Futur in Torino, offer hotel accommodations with your gig ticket, leaving you only to work out how you're going to get there. If that's not your musical street, then the stunning town of Verbier has a two-week festival where you can enjoy classical music by night and the stunning scenery by day. No matter what you love, remember these golden festival rules. Don't over Instagram to make absent friends feel a bit jealous. Make sure to make new friends and that you actually do enjoy the festival. Don't forget a hat or forget where your tent is and don't be that person who forgets to put on the sun lotion. And who knows, maybe next time you'll be trending in travel. Now we're in Austria, where beneath the ice of the southern lake of Weissensee, one of the world's most well-known games gets an icy makeover. My name is Jason Redl, I'm a professional freediver. Freediving means you go diving without any equipment. You just have your fins and your mask and the air in your lungs. It was a dream from my childhood. I always was in love with the water. At the beginning, when I did my first world record in freediving on the rise, I was so fascinated that I was looking for something to go again under the ice. Then we found the idea ice hockey is action sport. You have to work hard for it, even on the land. And it was so much fun that we make a regulation about it. championship we had eight different nations 
and in each nation we have two players. Ready? The main problem is always to find uh, other players because a normal hockey player makes no sense otherwise. So you need three divers, very good ones. It's already a big challenge to go under ice. It's the water temperature, it's about the orientation, you know, you cannot go to the surface whenever you want. And it's a very quick game. And uh, because you are so quick, you need much more oxygen than normal. I cannot break my legs, my arms, like in the real ice hockey, so it's much safer under the ice. Uh, the only problem we have is that you can easily lose the orientation. You always have to calculate that you have to swim to the hole. You cannot play until you say, now I need air, because at that moment you don't get it. For me, it makes no big difference if I have 10 world records or 11 world records. Now I want to use my world records to take attention, to bring the attention to all the problems we have with the ocean. And now the problems uh, cancelled my world record again. <laughs> If you want to play against me and I saw Keanu Rice, you're more than welcome. <laughs> but of course, despite Christian's invitation, don't even think about doing underwater ice hockey without expert help and supervision. Well, that's all for this week. But coming up next week... Krista heads to Dublin to try her hand at cosplay. And Addie's in Dubai checking out one of the biggest gardens in the entire world. This place is like the Chelsea Flower Show on steroids. So make sure not to miss it. But for now, from me, Mike Corey, and the rest of the Travel Show team here in Thailand, it's goodbye. <laughs>